how and where is everybody else? You want to just check in uh, briefly? Um, Bill? Surviving. Busy, busy house. Uh, yesterday, Multnomah County, the county we're in in Portland, uh, declared phase one reopening starts shortly. So yeah, it, even as Oregon is spiking. So don't know how that's going to play. Out. You see that in Texas where the governor made a rule that the cities can't make any rules about you know, wearing masks. It's just completely nuts. Completely nuts. Um, Shay, how are you today? Good morning. Um, I'm okay. <clears throat> still a bit groggy waking up. Um, but here in Salt Spring, still, uh, we finally have gotten over a period of what has been known as January, because uh. it's just been pouring rain. So really excited now to have some uh, sunshine. Pacific so, Northwest had a weird spring. Yeah, we've been like, it's been all rain. Yeah, um, the West Coast, I think all of BC had just um, downpour. And I was asking my dad, who lives in the interior, when does cherry season start? And he said, well, it's late this year because we've had so much wetness. So mm. we're looking forward to the harvest, you know. Awesome. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Just a quick question. Are we going to yeah. be here for an hour or two hours today? I have to make another phone call at some point. So just I have set us for an hour and I'm, I'm okay. happy to hang out after and we can switch to my Zoom if we want. But uh, I've set it for an hour so we can sort of catch up and figure okay. out what we'd like to do. Uh, and if anybody wants to spill over, I'm, I'm here. So. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for the question. Um, Charles, how's everything? Uh, it's good. I'm trying to get some coffee together and get get in front of my map in a minute, but um, mostly good. Um, yeah, plenty of turbulence sort of all around, but mostly super amazing, awesome, exciting project development um, stuff. And I'm here in Zurich, Switzerland, by the way, for those who don't know me, it's Thanks. great to meet those of you I haven't met. Um, and uh, it's weird, it's, it's, it's back to normal mostly, which is, you know, a, a fallacy and a farce and a fantasy. And I do see a few masks uh, out and about, um, including mine, and I, especially when I'm going inside someplace. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to, to uh, go into that now, but um, I have d deep mixed feelings about all that. And um, I've been bunkered down largely, and I came out of the cave um, sort of last week a bit. And um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, keeping, keeping busy and uh, inspired. For sure, glad to be here. I think maybe ambivalence is the word of the month. It's like yeah, yeah opening but closing, but opening but closing, and and six months from now we'll know whether whether and how you know that worked and what the effects were. But well, um, yeah, those that those that are more in the know that I'm listening to are um, really seeing the second wave, like shadowing this one, or dwarfing it at, rather. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, quick, quick te um, technical admin question about the. The forum and the Google group. Um, yeah. I filled out the form twice, actually. I wrote you, but I, I'm just curious about the Google group because I haven't seen it and been able to find it. I will go check because I think I'm not getting alerts when anybody fills out the form, which is bad form on my form or something okay. like that. Just because, um, uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm in there. Exactly. I, me yeah. too. Me too. So I, uh, you have just reminded me to go check. Um, Ken, how's, how's things in your, in your lovely backyard? Things are lovely in my lovely backyard. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm here in Center Fell and out here in my garden. As you can see, the sun is starting to peak over the house here. Um, although it'll be a couple hours for it, it's the peaks for all to be in the shade. Um, I just completed working for the U.S. Census uh, that wound down yesterday, and uh, I got paid for three weeks to go walk around in Point Reyes and Inverness Park and uh, Stinson Beach and Bolinas. Sweet. Wow, it was really wonderful to be out in West Marin. Um, uh, we kept social distance. I didn't come within ten feet of anybody. You know, I just I was not interviewing people. I was basically updating the addresses and leaving questionnaires. Um, I'm pretty distressed by what I'm seeing here in California. People are not wearing masks. Uh, the restaurants on Fourth Street and Center Fell are opening, and people are sitting outside and congregating without masks and without proper wow. social distancing. I read yesterday the um, Montgomery, Alabama City Council, despite several doctors saying, you know, our beds are full, our ICUs are 96%. 90% uh, of those people are black people. Uh, please wear masks, wow. pass this ordinance. 
the council voted to not pass an ordinance to wear masks uh, with one of the council members saying, just because there's a pandemic doesn't mean we surrender our constitutional rights. So, you know, and Alabama just recorded like 400 new cases in one day. So it's, there's a craziness here. It's an, it's a surreality, you know, it's like, yeah. I, for the last three months, I've been walking around with a mask on every time I got in public, looking at all these people with masks going, this is a Philip K. Dick novel. And now people are like, I'm taking the mask off. I don't care whether the COVID's done or not. So I, I guess it's natural selection and action. And, and I really don't feel good in wishing harm on people. I don't want people to get sick and die. And yet if they don't want to wear masks, that's what's going to happen. So I, I don't right. know. I'm, I'm in a, one of those weird places of how to be with this in a compassionate way without getting too angry because people are putting everyone else at risk. It's, it's a big conundrum for me. And we're the problem really... is you don't know when you're interacting with somebody who did something stupid yesterday. So right. my wife's office has been starting to go back and then they found out that one of the women that she works with who had been in the office for the previous couple of days, you know, was connected, had been out to a bar with somebody who was then, you know, diagnosed. And so, you know, all of a sudden, everybody in the office is worrying about whether they're a, you know, third level contact or something. And, you know, so you, you don't know that people are being that stupid, you know, when you're sitting near them someplace. They should yep. do just like on El Al Airlines. Anybody ever flown on El Al? So at, the, at the airport, when you check in, you're basically grilled. You're, when you're standing in line, you're basically grilled by somebody who knows, knows better. And, and they, they walk through the whole story of what your travels are and what's going on and who you know and right. what, what's up. To make sure it all kind of pieces together they're not they're not doing anything intrusive and they're not waterboarding you um, but boy are they trying hard to make sure that you're that you've got a really excellent reason to be boarding that flight and so here it's like maybe coming back to work we should do that to everybody you know, like to, to discover if they're just just being clumsy and stupid because um, how do how do you tell otherwise just just to just to throw in yeah. a number that, that flew by my screen yesterday um, i don't know what the source but um apparently in the state of california the, the mortality rate is still now, um, I guess from COVID, I think that was the point, is, is around 72 or three a day. So people, people dying. dying. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's, it's messy. Hamilton, you wanna check in? One, uh, one yeah. Last, uh, oh, Ken, did you have something else to say? Just one last point, and I, I, another thing I read, there's a congressman, I didn't read the article, so I don't know who it was, who said, the good news is that, that COVID may only kill 3.4% of the population in the U.S. 321 million people is 11 million people at 3.4%. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we've only got 1.55% million of Americans killed in all wars since the American Revolution. So this is a big win for us to only lose 11 million people. I'm, tell me what planet I am living on. Yeah, no, we right. just switched from Philip K. Dick to some other more dystopian. Yeah, exactly. Planet no fact. Planet no facts. Let me just add as a background note that one of the reasons that the Open Global Mind Project exists is to see that the post-fact, post-truth era is, not, is, is only like a four-year digression, not a 200-year era, because, because it's, it's, bless you, because it's very possible, um, it's very possible that this lasts a really long time. This is being engineered, architected, it's being driven, and you're seeing the effects. You're, you're just, you know, it's overcoming logic, and, and we're in planet no facts. Sorry, Hamilton, you were going to check in. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, so, not to be an upper here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't want to, to, feel, be <laughs> to feel all selfish. Um, it's in, so, I turned 50 yesterday. Hey, happy um, birthday. And yes, thank you, thank you. I, since I couldn't have a party, I'm just gonna tell everybody that and make you to say happy birthday to me. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and I'm sort of peaking. I really have to say, like, I think about this year, I met Jerry, I met you in this year. Hank, I met you in this year. I, you know, Peter, I've had a year's worth of amazing conversations with you picking up on our friendship and like, my work is really interesting. Like, I just, I don't know, I like, I'm having a, recon a rehamescence here, as I said to my wife the other day, um, and I'm loving it. So I'm so happy to be here. And it's, I'm not, it's not lost on me. I'm not blindly walking out the world with like, it's like, it's against this backdrop. It's brought into great relief where, where, you fit, where the world is falling apart around us and we live on planet no fact, right? It's like, are we, what, what, is, what, that, what is that world out there? I mean, it's just, it's like, 
And how do you like tell your, what do you, your kids and your, what, I mean, how do you tell them to make sense of this? It's really interesting. It's like, it's, I'm like peaking and everything I believe is being challenged in a way that has never been before. So I like feel very, I don't know, I feel very alive right now, which is interesting. Yeah. So I'm very glad to get to share, share this moment with you guys as well. Because you're That's contributing awesome. to it. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I mean, the world is melting, but when it melts, it gets to reform yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah. And, um, and it could reform in better ways. One of, the, one of the big questions in the back of my head right now is, are we, might we tip into much better systems for how to run the world because of yep. this? And I'm trying to finish writing a piece about exactly that. Um, yep. Hank? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I share... <clears throat> a lot of the same sentiments as, as you guys. Um, you know, it was funny today, specifically talking about the virus stuff. I got two separate notifications. One of them was like, New York City is on track to continue opening. And then the second one was like, we need to shut down again. And I'm like, okay, right. One second I'm here and another second I'm here. But so I had that moment of frustration, but anyway, otherwise, you know, um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, it has been interesting to see some glimpses of like true conversation come out of a lot of this, which has been great. Um, and see like just people kind of opening their eyes to, to some other, to how we're actually having conversations about, you know, um, whether it be the virus, whether it be any of the, the, the racial stuff that came up and actually, um, what was it? This whole planet, no facts thing. Somebody, I was in a breakout session yesterday and I'll respect the confidentiality of the session, but, um, one of the guys made an interesting comment that racism, uh, the act of like propagating racism has become an art and it made me think of, I mean, yeah, sure. We can, we can look at like racism and say that too, but we can also look at just new, maybe not news spin, but information spin in general, right? Becoming an art. And um, I don't know, I've just, I've been chewing on that for the past 12 hours. And I was talking about kind of this whole spin cycle and who's doing what and who's yelling what and saying certain things a certain way to, to see who agrees or disagrees or whatever um, is, is anyway, just interesting. So, so that's my semi distorted thoughts for the morning. Thanks, Hank. <clears throat> Bill just posted about shit posting, which is like becoming a, becoming a fine art. Um, Peter Van, how's, how's life in Belgium? Doing great. I think I'm more or less in the, the same high skies as uh, Ham. It's not my birthday, but uh, still. Um, I have been for the last couple of weeks, really, uh, immersing myself in the work of Anne Pendleton. Um, which is highly inspirational. I had a chat with, uh, a very quick chat with Anne um, uh, before the call. She was going to try to join, uh, but not sure. Um, so, and I got her okay to make a proposal. Well, proposal is not the right word, to suggest to this group that we do something with something that Anne said in the previous call that we may have a little bit missed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was about uh, your brain and the open global mind is a very good way for visualizing and seeing what is and what has been. Mm -hmm. But as long as we are not um, finding a way how to see what's coming or what, what could emerge, so seeing in the future, then we miss an opportunity of, uh, having, of taking agency, agency as in the sense of having, uh, acting with impact in the world. Uh, I'm, I'm highly inspired by her work and so our proposal is that we offer to do something around uh, helping OGM creating a system of action, which is one of the meta tools that is described in one of the books, which means getting clarity on vision, 
vehicle concept mechanism and network of partners, which will help define not only what uh, is, but also seeing what, uh, what could emerge from this and how we can design for it. Yeah. Not only have responses that are like heuristic responses to you're getting used to it and it's becoming a tacit form of knowledge. No, no, you can do better than that. You can design for specific outcomes. And I would like that um, uh, we start in, in something like that around uh, OGM. How can we design for specific outcomes and not only uh, looking at what the history tells us mm -hmm. and the links that are in the brain, which are mm -hmm. all about what was and is. Peter, oh, can I? Heidi, Heidi, uh, inspired, uh, alive, kicking, yeah. writing, making music, making artwork, writing, drawing. Uh, I'm building my, trying to build an um, online museum because I tried to have an, my first art exhibition somewhere end May, but for obvious reasons could not take place. So I'm playing around with uh, online museum uh, software where you can create a, a, a virtual space and you can put your paintings and your videos and your sculptures in that space and it's fun. I'm having hey, fun. Peter, can I, can I take this opportunity to talk about, so Peter and I've been talking about some of this and Peter came up with this idea of, uh, we've been talking about this workshop idea. Of, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And we didn't love the word and he, and he, Peter, as you always do, you're like, it was right in front of us all along, this idea of a studio. Um, and I was, I was telling Hank and Jerry about this idea of an OGM studio session with Anne or with, with anyone really, right? Um, but these of, of, you know, this place of study, this place of study and around all the stuff that you just talked about. So I, I don't know. I've been yeah, saying that a, a lot. I'm very excited about that idea. There is another I discovered in, since we last talked, uh, Ham. There is another piece of great writing by Anne, uh, which is called Four Plus One Studio. Um, and she's describing four types of studio, where the first type is the sort of studio that is directed really by the architect who has a certain vision and tries all his students to adhere to that vision up to the plus one studio, which is about what we have been discussing here, uh, seeing and seeing what comes and seeing designing for emergence through gameplay, strategic gameplay, strategic game design. So it's so rich. Uh, I would like to do something with, with that. Yeah. Um, that sounds really, Awesome. It sounds like a great OGM project. And, um, and <clears throat> let's jump into that as we sort of jump into the conversation. Um, How are you, I Jerry? Love that. Um, I'm in Portland where, <clears throat> similar to Shea, because we're in the same climate zone, uh, June up until the yeah, day before yesterday was like a rainy mess, just foggy, cloudy, rainy, wet the whole time, which is unusual. Um, exactly. And, um, and it's turned really beautiful. The next week is supposed to be gorgeous. And I think we might actually be in summer. Uh, and unfortunately in a couple of days and three days is to me the saddest day of the year, which is the longest day of the year. Cause I love, <clears throat> I love the run up to the longest day. I love the days getting longer. And then, it, and then it reverses and I'm like, ah, darn it. So that's coming up, but, but in a really good place, um, uh, we, April, April's giving a virtual speech soon. And on Monday we recorded it in a studio on a green screen and stuff like that with people who know better than we do, like cameras and all that stuff. So, so that's done and kind of in the bag and there's still pieces of, of it that have to happen, but that felt like a, 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 great, a great thing to, to pull off. So, uh, so suddenly April doesn't have to re rehearse a speech twice a day for a while and she was sort of feeling liberated and looking around going, wait a minute, what does this mean? Um, so, so stuff like that. And then, and then the texture of what we're talking about here really feels fruitful and timely and exciting. So I'm, I'm kind of him like, like you, I'm in a place where it feels like so many, so many threads of life are coming together in a really interesting way at a great moment with great humans uh, like you all. So, so that make, make me feel good. 
Thank you. Um, and the place, I, I wanted to take us into the call lightly in the sense of uh, floating some ideas for things that we could assemble around right now to do together uh, that would make sense for OGM. And Peter Van just put an, a new and really interesting one uh, in, in the pond, which I, which I love. Um, and sort of what, two other ones that I'll just mention right now, uh, and then I'd love to just hear what, what everybody else uh, feels like. Uh, one of them is, um, I'm, I'm, I'd like to design for the website and for our process, uh, this sorting hat analogy, the idea of how, to, how, do we, uh, make, how do we create a really nice path so that somebody coming in as a newbie to OGM at some point goes, oh, here are the kinds of sort of roles people play in this community of practice. Uh, how do I find my way into being that? And then how, do I, how, how is the rest of this thing sort of gently organized so that they can find their way to the place where they're working on something that they're really interested in, uh, whether it be uh, sort of this, this sense-making project uh, that Peter just described the system of action, whether it be something else, you know, one of these other sub-projects. So what, what does a sorting hat look like? Uh, which involves also um, picking up and defining better what, what are the kind of initial roles that we want to describe here uh, and how do they fit together? Um, and then the second thing was something that I think would just illustrate a little bit of, of what OGM is about. I'd love to have a, a couple hour kind of visualization um, uh, jam session where I show up with my brain because that's the thing I've been nourishing for so long, but several people show up with other tools and we talk about the same exact topic and either we've prepped for it and everybody's had a chance to go do something around the topic or we live sort of share screens back and forth and then we compare notes at the end of it. And uh, I, you know, I've got three or four tools in mind. I would love to invite everybody in because I think that we'll learn a lot ourselves just from the contrast and the, the similarities between the different tools. And partly what I'm trying to do is get us to, to step back and think about how does discourse change when you can see and manifest and record and share the thing you're talking about? What, what are the effects? And, and so far OGM is fueled by my amateur personal beliefs about this. Like, like I'm on fire that, that we don't have a shared memory and, that, and, and I believe that, that we're making stupider decisions as humans like walking out without masks because we have no shared backboard, no shared uh, you know, uh, chalkboard, no shared place where we can go, hey, look, <clears throat> these couple studies, you know, who knows what happens 10 years from now and how we look back on this, but these couple studies say that if everybody, everybody, everybody wears masks, the replication just draw, it just plummets. The R factor, you know, R naught plunges. And so can we just all maybe agree to do that? And if not, can we figure out playful, interesting ways to convince other people to do that? So, so not just the decision-making, but the, the change-making, right? Um, so may, in Bogota, Mayor Antanas Mokus, who got pretty famous, is a real strange dude. Um, he basically uh, unemployed most of the traffic police because there were traffic jams all over Bogota. And then he re-employed some of them as mimes. And he basically had troops of mimes who would go stand in traffic and, and they would, if there were jaywalkers who were making a mess of things, they would, they would walk behind the jaywalkers kind of making fun of them, but they were trying to draw attention in a humorous way to how poorly Bogota citizens were driving and walking and, and sort of using uh, the technology of moving around in vehicles. And it worked, like, like people started thinking more about being more mindful about how they uh, moved around, traffic got better. Then they did a whole bunch of other really innovative things like the Ciclovias, which is they installed a whole bunch of bike paths through, throughout and, and transformed the city. <clears throat> but, but I'm really interested in, in sort of hacking the system, not through mere logic and gosh, wasn't this a great idea, but rather um, social hacks, uh, fun projects, uh, letting people have a sense of agency again, kind of what, what Peter was describing about Ann Pendleton Julian's uh, approach, which is, like we're, we're, we're kind of dumb consumers at the end of a stick now uh, with very little sense of agency and uh, large thorny wicked problems like pandemics plus social unrest uh, that is basically poking open this festering wound uh, that has been in at least American society forever. Um, we need creative solutions for, for how to get through all this. So, so that I think that's a, a, a really nice match with what Open Global Mind is meant to be and I'd love to hear what any of those things mean to any of you, which parts of this are interesting to you. 
uh, and then riff on this because let's let, let's put a couple other things on the table that sound uh, you know, if, if some part of this conversation has resonated with something you've wanted to do for a really long time and feel strongly about, well, let's throw it in the mix because I bet we can find some other people um, to come join us. And, uh, and, and just as a brief uh, sort of process note, uh, it looks like this 7 a.m. call time will work okay. Uh, che, you didn't mind too much getting up really early, Ken? Like it was okay? So what I'd like to do is hold this time and repeat the, you know, replicate this, this call time out, and then I will be better about getting advance notice out. I was terrible about it for this call, I apologize. Uh, but I will, and then, and then the other thing I'd love us to do is to start bringing people into the conversation who, <laughs> exactly, um, who would love to be part of this thing and go from there. So let me, let me go quiet for a second and see uh, anybody's thoughts. On any part of that, what has what has energy or uh, or juice for people uh, around this? Yes, to the to the mapping jam sessions, I'm I'm into that. But cool. you know, a little a little advance notice so we can plan and, and go longer if we can. Also, that sounds great. great. Uh, any thoughts about how to organize it or what tools to invite in or whatever? Mm. Mm. I think, um, well, I, my default, as some of you know, is, is XMind, which is a mind mapping tool. It's not specifically collaborative. Um, I'm sort of at the doorway of using Miro. I have some close friends of ours that are really into Miro these days. So that's probably a natural one with a lot of fun affordances and collab features. So there's a couple that come to mind. Um, I'm a Kumu wannabe, so I don't know. That's something else we can get into potentially, but I haven't done it myself. Yeah. Uh, like me. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in um, showing up at the beginning and doing some brain warm ups, some somatic experiential stuff that would, you know, you don't go out for a run by starting, you know, a, with a sprint right out your door. You do a little bit of warm ups, right? And I find people diving into conversations like, hey, you know, let's just talk about this really big thing without taking time to put themselves in a space of, of flow and creativity. So I'd be happy to contribute that. That sounds awesome. Okay. And, and I'd like to bake uh, more of the somatic kinds of exercises that you've done uh, can into OGM process, into what we do and how we do it. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Um, as well as uh, respecting where we are and who we are. And, and you know, if you've ever attended a meeting in Australia or New Zealand, they always start by saying, you know, we, we are on the territory, on the lands of uh, these peoples and, and sort of honor them. Uh, tomorrow is Juneteenth, uh, mm -hmm. which I would love to have as a holiday instead of Columbus Day, for example. Um, but just uh, noting, being mindful of our place and space and time in different ways. Um, and we can, we can kind of figure out how that goes as we go. But, but sometimes, sometimes small things make large differences over time. Go ahead, Ken. One other tool that comes to mind, um, Charles, you may know about this. Um, Lucas Chiaffi from the National Coalition for Dialogue Deliberation has a tool called Kiko Chat, which actually, if you do the work up front, lets you set up um, breakout rooms and people can choose their own breakout rooms. So you can run a virtual open space or a virtual world cafe without the host having to specifically put people in rooms and people can leave and go to other rooms. So if we had a large group and that was something that wanted to happen, um, I don't happen to have a Kiko Chat uh, account, but I'm sure we could work that out. So I'll just put that out as a possible tool for some potential day that we get together. And Lucas is a friend, and I've had several conversations with him about this. Kiko Chat um, enables the law of two feet in Zoom, for example. Um, the law of two feet comes from open space process where anybody can move to any breakout room, and you can't do that in Zoom breakouts. So he's created a way to basically attach a document to every breakout room and then allow people to move themselves between the rooms so that, so that it facilitates that. And there's a bunch of videos online now. He's been recording and sharing different groups using Kiko Chat to have different kinds of meetings. It's a, it's a lovely thing. So I think it's a, it's a fabulous idea to um, have an o, one or, or many uh, OGM meetings <clears throat> hosted with Kiko Chat. That'd be great. Just and, to start, no, it's a sort of spiritual partner of Kiko Lab, which is a different spelling, but we, we sort of resonate with the, the name, but we didn't check it out yet. 
Very cool. Um, other thoughts, other, other, Shay, what's going through your brain? I'm curious. I, I, I can uh, see, I can see you working yeah. the, con the constellations of things that have gone through that you're interested in that like, I, I feel like I'm watching that process in, in the little tiny window here. And I, <laughs> if I'm, if I may ask. Yeah, no, no, thank you, Jerry. Um, I, I, I was hesitant to say anything because it's slightly off the topic, but it was something that was triggered um, a little bit earlier on. And then you just said it again, you know, small things can make a big difference. And, you know, we're having this conversation globally and we had touched on it a bit last time around diversity. And um, I think that, um, I think it's amazing to talk about visual visualization and, um, you know, how to tease out these ideas and thoughts and things. And I, and I also think, and I'm, I don't have the answer, but if someone knows processes or structures or frameworks for us to use to tease out each other's diversity, because, um, <clears throat> you know, even in the conversation about COVID, you know, that we were just having, having people have different opinions and ideas. And there are different things like I live in a country, let alone a little island that's been barely affected by this, right. And so I see a lot of paranoia and trauma and things, but that's also because um, of the the history that people have, you know, their diverse history with different things in this case, right? My dad was working in a hospital during SARS. So I also have a different perspective on that that's, you know, diverse from some other people, right? And so coming back to, you know, the actual definition of diversity um, in the way that we've been talking about it lately, how do we start to tease out each other's diversity such that we are more understanding in our conversations, you know? Um, and then, you know, we're here and of course I'm the only woman and you're all white men. Um, you know, we, I don't think I need to say that, right? But we're aware of that, you know, and um, we're, so how are we bringing that in, you know, and, and getting more voices into as we're trying to sense make in a visual way or in a, you know, way where people can break out and have multiple conversations. That's just what's going through my head. It's not really a fully formed thought, um, but you know, that's, that's kind of where I was at with it. And I don't think that's tangential at all. I think that's top dead center for, for what we're up to. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Um, no doubt in my mind. Um, and so I, let, let's, let's correct for that. In, in part, in part, part of the invitation to the first call was, mm -hmm. uh, was said that, hey, if you're, if you're in the same demographic as me, um, part of the pale patriarchal penis people, um, <laughs> I, I ask that you invite somebody or think about who else you would invite that doesn't, doesn't fit that description. <clears throat> um, and we haven't done that very well. So I would, so I would love to, to, to do that more. And I also would like to exactly the four piece. Um, and I would love to invite in groups and serve, be of service to groups that are doing some of the diversity work. And right now, since black lives matters is really hot and also uh, it's not just Black Lives Matters, but indigenous ways and a whole bunch of communities who've been marginalized for so long, their agenda is now top dead center. One of the things I'd love to do is to use our nascent, barely flourishing powers to tell their stories. <clears throat> because right this minute, if you're a person of color or indigenous, what, you have no particularly good reason to come into a discussion about um, technical aspects of memory and how to do discourse and whatever. There's there's really urgent things to do on you know on the ground, mm -hmm. and so if we can be of help in this moment on those things, I think it focuses our efforts um, really nicely around something that matters a ton in the world, and it creates a reason and an opening to invite people, collaborators in uh, from communities that have big concerns right now. So 100%. if anybody wants to elaborate on that or offer suggestions for how to go about that. Ooh, ooh, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter. Um, Please, Arnold. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I just love that. And I just, um, I guess I, in our conversations and, and Jerry, Hank and I have been having this longer, I, I am increasingly just moving away from what the tool is and to like just the applications of this. And like one of the things that really, like this, the studio sessions with Anne is just amazing, right? And I think we could, you could either find problems that need to be solved and then find the expertise to attack that problem, or you could just find an expertise and just push it out into the world and help people apply it to their lives, right? So that's amazing. Um, and I think we could do that right now. Like we don't need a tool to do that, right? I also think about, um, 
uh, the, the OGM religion, for lack of a better word, and sorry if that's a, a third rail word, oh, but like this just mindset, this like belief of thinking better, being critical thinkers, of 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 having agency, right, of all of that, and um, and diversity, Shay, and and all of that, and like like we can start impacting that now, right? I don't think we need technology. I mean, just the fact that we're on this call talking about we have all this expertise, like we could just get this out into the world. And I think about this idea of a foundation. Um, and I'll, if I could share a quick example. So my sister is an art teacher in Kansas City and she was like, she's feeling this very much so because she works with poor kids and, and all of this that's going on. And she's like, I want to do something. I know art, I'm gonna go do something. So she applied for this grant and she's teaching a virtual class on portraits in history where she's teaching people to draw portraits of people that they, you know, famous people that they role model, right? And why and how they could be by. And so it's but using art as a, as a vocabulary to express themselves and create hope, whatever. So, so we could do that, right? I mean, Ken, you could go into, we could through technology reach out to people who need it and talk about somatic exercises, talk about how to use your brain, right? We could teach people how to be critical thinkers. Um, Peter, you could talk, I mean, you know, design is design is inquiry, all that and stuff. Like we have so much where I think like, we don't really need a technology, we need a purpose uh, behind it and just like, you know, finding ways and just trying stuff. So I get on my, my soapbox about that. And then I think the technology, um, I mean, could it, could it be the ones, do we need to build anything like, uh, Miro and Kiko and Jerry, your brain and Google Docs, uh, you know, like what is the, the minimum thread we need to pull this all together so that we can go out and just start impacting things. Um, so I guess blah, blah, blah. I'm much more interested in looking for applications <laughs> of impact because I think it will just, it will make the other stuff make sense behind the scenes because it already exists. It's all there. You yeah. know, it just it's all there. It, it, it's focus. all there. It's not very connected. It's not very linked and, and useful in ways that, that it could be. But it's it, a lot of it, this exists. Um, but the piece that, all that the linking would make it so much easier. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really like where we are. Just to, to add a slightly tongue in cheek but slightly serious digression. Um, I, I, I have two little baby websites and I own the, the domains foobarism.com and upketo.com. Let me explain them. Um, does everybody know what FUBAR is? So um, FUBAR dates back apparently to World War I-ish, and it's, you know, how's the situation? Oh, it's FUBAR. What's FUBAR? It's fucked up beyond all recognition. So, so that, that came out. But then FU.BAR became a programmer's shorthand for a temporary file name. So if you're busy writing a program, you want to, you know, it, it say, well, we need a file here where you call it like something like FU.BAR. Uh, picking up on it, sort of in, in homage to the first who bar. So I had this idea: what what would a placeholder religion look like if we had to create our own spiritual system, whatever you want to call it? And you know, I think everybody knows Scientology was invented as a bar bet. L. Ron Hubbard like won a bar bet that he could start a religion, and he wrote Dianetics and all that. And like, there are people who believe in this thing, not not the most high functional religion in the world, but. But, but what if we could create a, a belief system? What would be in it? So th these exist and could be a side project if we felt like doing it. And it's intentionally tongue in cheek because you can't do something like this seriously, but I think it's a serious conversation to have. And then separately at a slightly different timing, um, my sport is Aikido. And so I coined up Keto, which is, uses the, the ideas of Aikido, which is blending with energy, seeing what energies are in the environment, blending with them, uh, in order to create peace is sort of the intention of Aikido. Um, and up is from upward spiral or uplift. And um, years ago, Arthur Brock sent me a video about a guy who was walking around the hillsides of Northern California with a trowel, just a hand trowel, and he was repairing the hillsides. Uh, Paul Krafel, or Krafel, I think is his name. <clears throat> and he was repairing the hillsides and he took pictures that were separated by like a decade and he showed the same little hillside but that at one point had a crevasse and was kind of brown and then he comes back and it's green and there's a verdant valley below it and he was using these principles of up, he called it upward spiral which is tiny gestures over time uh, that, that really improved uh, the, the neighborhood and then later I ran into a documentary about the, the Lowe's Plateau in China which is an area the size of Belgium that was this that was basically a dust bowl 
because they had, they had overgrazed, they had destroyed the, the fertility of the place. And over a couple decades, using villagers at a much larger scale, they repaired that whole area and turned it into a green, a, a green and really useful part of China again. Um, so regreening. And to me, those two stories are the same story, just at different scales, and it's all about uplift. So, long story shorter, um, uh, Upkido is meant to be, what would a martial art or a practice look like where its intention is that everything that everybody touches is made better by their presence, right? How do we create uplift in all of our small gestures? How do we think f toward abundance? This is, Shay, this is abundance mentality. Like, how do we incorporate all those things into a belief system? And what does that practice look like? Right? I know what Aikido practice looks like. You go into a dojo, you, so the teacher teaches, shows you something, you pair up and you do the exercise. <clears throat> it's a form of practice and there's some ritual around it, which is really lovely. Um, and some warm ups and some you know, other sorts of things. So what does that look like from an OGM perspective? And there's an audio tool called FUBAR. Awesome. <laughs> um, and I love the chat, thank you. Totally cool stuff. Um, Can you say something? Just, just, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Charles. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, just, That's just. Uh, I had um, put in the chat. Uh, Kiko Lab motto is minimum viral upward spiral. Go ahead, Shay. That's great. Love that. Go ahead, Shay. Um, to Jerry, I love that. It literally was making my eyes water, um, as you can imagine. So that's wonderful. And it, and it triggered another thought for me as well um, that seems like to be sort of a common thread for me. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, trauma that people are experiencing right now around COVID, around connection, masks, surfaces, whatever it is. Um, and then we've got <clears throat> Black Lives Matter and trans lives matter and all of these things that are coming up, right? And so I think that there's a, um, a collective healing that needs to happen. Um, and so I think if we are talking about open global mind, um, it's, I think it's a great thing to be um, going into solutions. And Ham, you were talking about, um, you know, we, we have a tool, you know, we just, we wanna, you know, we, we, the tool doesn't really matter. It's more about just applying it to, to getting to the solution, right? And, um, <clears throat> I would yeah exactly right and that is so important and you know that's where everybody falls down is actually making the change right everyone's got lots of ideas and there's way too many tools and everyone's inundated right um, but we need to think about also where are people really at right now such that they can receive that impact that change that um, progress you know if we want to call it progress and believe that it is um, I think that there's there's maybe something and maybe this is the feminine coming out in me but ta thinking about there's there's a healing that needs to happen and a and a recognition of the trauma that we are collectively experiencing right now um so just also taking that in recognizing like where people are at at the moment yeah i just, i love that i have been I mean, I'm just going to talk about me for a second. I've been in every conversation that I have around all of this stuff that has just been something that I feel like I keep on trying to bring people back to is <clears throat> thinking about this through that lens. Right. And um, it is actually, it's got me thinking a lot about OGM too. And, and I don't think I articulated it necessarily as well as you just did now, Shay. So, so thank you for that. Um, but I mean, it is, it is part of it, right? Like you can only, yeah, I was reading something this week. I think it was something in, like Khalil, Khalil Gibran's The Prophet, right? And it was like, um, you don't, you can only learn something that is already half sown in your own mind. And you think about like that, what, you know, you can unpack that a lot of different ways. But one of the ways that I took it is just like, you have to kind of be taking steps to, to get there before you can really see what you need to see, right? And how can we, you know, create a container in which those kind of interactions can happen can happen, right? And also help people take those steps to even start sowing those seeds themselves. Um, you know, which is, I mean, you know, trauma is a huge part of that. Healing is a huge part of that, right? Like, how can you, how can you see something from what it is if you've always seen it one way, right? Um, or even just recognize that it could be something else, um, which, is, which is great. So, so thanks. Love that. Um, two tiny things. One is that one of my beliefs is that one of the greatest change agents on the planet is when someone takes someone else by the hand to try something new. <clears throat> I mean, 
I, I, I came to love Quaker meeting because I lived in Southport, Connecticut and was working in a little company there and had just broken up with a girlfriend. And one of my buddies said, hey, you seem kind of glum. Uh, the family and I have been attending this friend's meeting in Wilton. Would you like to join us? And I had never ever heard of Quakers or knew nothing. I had heard the name, but I knew nothing about them. And went from that to being a regular attendee and it, it really, really affecting how I see the world and, and all those sorts of things. Um, so, so taking people by the hand, which is not about technology, it's not about anything. It's about trust and relationships and trying stuff. And then um, second, I'd love to read a short poem, <clears throat> which feels like it's very much of the moment. Uh, I'll put the, the link in the chat. Uh, the poem is called Home to Roost by Kay Ryan. And it's short uh, and it, it just seems like it's of the moment. <clears throat> it goes like this. The chickens are circling and blotting out the day. The sun is bright, but the chickens are in the way. Yes, the sky is dark with chickens, dense with them. They turn and then they turn again. These are the chickens you let loose, one at a time and small, various breeds. Now they have come home to roost, all the same kind at the same speed. And I love the bird song at the end right after. Thank you. Audio by Ken. Yeah, exactly. Audio, <laughs> audio soundscapes, my soulscapes. Um, so I think we have a bunch of things in front of us that we're, that we're excited about, in, including inviting more people in so that this can be a more diverse conversation. Um, but I think we have to become more relevant to more diverse people in order to do that. Mm. Um, otherwise, we're just a salon discussion. <clears throat> and and we don't need to code a lot of stuff to have a magical new thing to offer value someplace. We actually, I think that, that there's enough tools, we have enough stuff around that, uh, that there's very, there's, there's a lot we can do just as we are, where we are. So let's figure out how to organize that. Go ahead, Charles. In terms of um, tools or other approaches, um, I mean, you're recording, and I, I, I had a suggestion, which is what, something we do at the, at the Kiko Lab, for example, to run everything through auto to get the transcript. And I mean, whether, whether we sort of get to that level of, of collaboration and, and um, sense making in terms of, let's just say, creating a to-do list or, or sort of extracting actionable items from your brain, for example, I mean, who's doing that or how are we gonna do that together or who's, who's got their eye on, the, on those kind of balls? Um, so part of the reason I've, we've invited you all is that you all seem like great architects of all these kinds of things and thinkers about how to go about these processes. So we have nascent ideas and we have a little website, we have a Google group, we have, uh, I've created um, a channel on Medium if we wanted to write essays and post them. Uh, we have a, a longstanding channel on, on YouTube that we can use. We have a LinkedIn group already formed for OGM. Uh, so, so, and these are, you know, we could easily create and we could propagate hashtags of different kinds or or do whatever else so <clears throat> these are conventional tools uh but there's no reason not to use them and we could pair up and say hey let's write an article about this and post it and then the rest of us could could go you know go about uh making it making it spread making it work um so i, th I think that's kind of up to us to set up rhythms and patterns and methods and to create and uh, and Peter, I'd love to hear a little more about sort of this, this and Pendleton Julian's approach toward uh, this, uh, what, did, what does she call it? Culture of work? No. Um, systems of action? <laughs> systems of action. action. I'd love to know more about that. In fact, um, I'd love to invite Anne to sort of lead a conversation about what she means by systems of action. I think that's a, that's a to-do list item, right? Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's all learn what systems of action mean. Uh, and where it goes. And then, Peter, I think you have to leave at the top of the hour. Also, do you want to add anything to this conversation before you have to bounce? It was a very small thing to your question, what kind of tools? I think I'm on the same wavelength as him, that we don't need more tools. But uh, what I have tried out recently with the Josie in Australia, we have regular call, is uh, before people enter the call, I'm playing music from, in this particular case, it's a very soft music from Robert Fripp. 
Yeah. So when you so when you enter the room, when you enter this space, it invites you to become more silent, contact with yourself, and not just bang right in. So it's probably along the same lines as Ken was mentioning before, and uh, inspired also by the work of Robert Poynton, who wrote the book uh, about pause. Maybe inject a couple of uh, one minute pauses in our calls where we are obliged to be silent for a minute <clears throat> and then come back to the topic and see how that has um, changed our mind or not. That was to the tool. Love that. And th any, <laughs> those of you who've attended any of my retreats know that I use the Quaker silence um, every now and then during, during those, those events. Uh, and oblique strategies is, is awesome. Um, anybody who'd like to add something to the, to the wrap of this call, please do so right now. Because it feels like several people are like. I'll just say it was great to, I mean, I just like, I'm just super excited to, I, Ham, Jerry and Matt, love talking to you guys two times a week but it's so nice to like just explore these ideas with other people and and see how you know we're like not really passing batons but we've like got all these torches lit everywhere and some people are like grabbing it and running to other places and just sharing ideas it's just cool man so thanks guys that's all i want to say and love the mindfulness stuff it's been uh it's been in my head a lot for the past month I use somatics as a way to get people out of their heads and into a mindful space without thinking about it. Because mindfulness is not what you think. Right. <clears throat> Can we be familiar with the work of Patrick Crowden? I don't know Patrick. Um, I, will, I will ping you with some stuff about him in a little bit. Fantastic, thank you. I'm just, uh, there's a little bit of shape that's taken place here that we were sort of striving for, Jerry. We don't have the sorting hat or every, but like, and, and not to presume anyone's intentions here, but like, there's a little bit of Charles, like it seems of some of the interest in the tech and the space and some fluency in there. And, and Jerry just referenced that. So like, that's a little node that's being, you know, that's starting to take shape. We knew it needed to. There's this whole thing around this way of being can you ask about competencies Shay, you talked about mindfulness and pause like uh, that, that's like what does it mean to to be or have ogm the, that and the foobar and the beliefs of that and like i think there's interest and that's a little node that's taking shape and then i think there's this impact node that sort of has a little tiny you know and and or what we're talking about with the bonnie workshop peter or just you know even the work that's happening uh, corporately at Fidelity, um, which, you know, you guys, we could say is Matt sort of trying to get this idea into a corporate environment and bring some of this technology beliefs way of impact into that. So um, I don't know, even though this was a very nice free flowing conversation, this got, this feels like structure is really starting to take place here. And I, I'm just really, I'm jazzed by that. And I love the diversity that the diversity of this group is what's causing this structure to take place. I'm jazz hands by that. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to go have ahead. to go like really shortly, but I want to also be jazzy uh, with my heart and everything else. Um, and maybe it's, it's just what I thought of just before in terms of like, Jerry, your brain, you know, having a lot of action items to be harvested, that that is a, a huge thing in itself. And we might really not need to go further. It, you know, sort of how to frame that and and make that into an action in itself or a process. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just offering that because that's plenty. We might not even have to say another word if, if we just go in there and, and brain it at the same time. <laughs> so, so a couple a couple thoughts. I <clears throat> I would love to do something with what I've built for 22 years because I've been curating something that I think is valuable. I'm also extremely frustrated that when I show up and run conversations using the brain. I'm the only person in the room who has an artifact like that. And I feel like each of us should have an artifact like that. Not that we built the whole thing, but that we found one we like and we use it a lot in conversation. And that's part of the reason why OGM exists is like, 
<clears throat> man, if, if we had tools like this together, that would be great. Um, I'd be thrilled. And until now, basically, I've been feeding my brain and I've been holding it in a lot. Um, I'm trying to think of how to maybe super reproduce it. Like, like just, yeah. you know, what if I put it into a GitHub repository <clears throat> and GitHub has this really nice model called fork and pull. Um, GitHub is a, is a code where coders share, share open source code and fork and pull means anybody can fork your repo, which means they copy your whole repository, which means in the sense of my brain, if we did, if I did this, they could copy my whole working brain and go off and use it to seed their own. And then pull means uh, they, when they improve something, they would send me a pull request, which would then mean I would add what they, their improvements to my brain, or I could choose not to. And that's uh, so fork and pull is a method for community improvement of some work, some thing. And I don't know if that would even work with the brain. I don't know. Like there's a, there's a couple big question, architectural questions around it, uh, but how might we make use of what I've done, Charles, the way you just, just suggested. And, and then I've thought about this a little bit in a couple different directions. I would love to have that conversation more broadly because it's, it's clearly a, an asset that matters. Yeah. Thanks. I, I have um, I have to jump for this. I just put in the chat this uh, Alliance for a Conscious Internet, which um, would be interesting to everyone. Um, I have make to sure go that, there. Make sure that to go to please. guys. But um, just just to say um, that sounds cool and great as far as getting you know your brain into GitHub. That sounds like maybe another place to just swim around and 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 find stuff. But but why not just sort of in real time doing the more human sense making kind of it's more efficient and maybe more exponential to kind of literally just through maybe smaller breakouts or I don't know I'm just you know riffing on a, a potential process or a, approach to a process is. Um, it's just to be more human about it and, and kind of really be able to zoom in as you do and you, you're the most fluid uh, in terms of knowing what's there and how to get around and and then just sort of um, I mean still recording everything and, and doing everything else that we do um, but but actually just focusing on action items and then and, and, and making mm -hmm. them structure uh, sort of initial structure as we go in real time that sounds great that's, that was my idea so I know you have to bounce let's pick this up on the mailing list and talk about it between cool. now and next next week um, but I love the idea. And it's a pleasure, everyone. Take care. Thank okay, you, everybody. Keep the Labs um, uh, Otter account is available. We have a pro account. So I know that Lauren uh, Nino will be glad to. to so uh, let's figure out if we can, if, if, let's figure out maybe we can find a way to automate the, the, pro, the uh, I can send the audio file there someplace. And, I think yeah. you can actually just integrate it with the Zoom as we go. So that'd yeah, be fabulous. That, that exists okay. for sure. Okay. See you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Charles. Bye, everybody. Take Bye -bye. care. Thanks. thanks, Jerry. This was great. Nice to see yeah. everybody. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for reaching out. Appreciate that. Of course, of course. We should chat soon, by the way. We we shall. I have a little more time in my schedule. I'm not working fifty hours a week anymore. So Yay. Jerry, I'm yeah. stealing your friends, man. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thanks, it's a lending everybody. library. <laughs> it is, totally. All right. Be well, everybody. Take care. Okay.